Hello and welcome to Couch Conversations. Cozy Couch Conversations. Even. <laughs> <laughs> Our theme for June is Breathe into Summer, Smoke and Wildfire Season Prep. As well as Extreme Heat. So we've got a bundle of things to kind of think about as we head into the summer months. So. We sure do. So the smoke comes, maybe the heat comes, a little bit of heat's okay, but sometimes we just exceed comfortable levels. Absolutely. And so just even thinking about that, I, I know even for myself, it make, gives me anxiety. Like I feel like we've gone through this winter, we're ready and looking forward to summer, yet our summers over the last couple of years have really been riddled with anxiety as we think about heat and smoke. Right, things that make us not feel very well and things that um, can impact our breathing. So we gotta prepare. And when you are prepared, this also helps to bring down the anxiety piece because you have a plan in place. So let's talk about things you can do to prepare for heat and or smoke. Okay, so let's break it apart in two. Why don't we discuss heat first? Sure. And so heat, as we mentioned, definitely can affect those with uh, chronic lung conditions, but yeah. overall, it can really affect anyone. It can. And, and that's it, the issue with it. It is, and it can especially affect people who are very young and people who are older as well. So if you are older with a chronic lung condition, um, this can impact the impact <laughs> of the heat. Yeah. Yeah. And many uh, people out there living with chronic lung conditions sometimes usually also have a cardiovascular component, and that's a bit of a double whammy, isn't it? Yeah, so the heat puts um, extra strain on your heart, which mm. also makes your breathing a little feel more labored. Yeah. So let's think about ways that we can cool things down. Yeah. So, you know, one of the first um, things maybe to think about or to prep for is just knowing um, what kind of heat we're dealing with because there's kind of different levels of heat. Um, so we might have heat warnings um, and then we might have extreme heat alerts. And we're really talking about the heat in our indoor environment. So we want to keep that pretty comfortable. Anything um, more than 31 degrees Celsius inside our homes is where the trouble might begin. Yeah, it's too much. So your body has ways to help you cool down. So without you doing anything, your body will try. But in these situations of extreme heat, your body won't be able to do that very well and it needs your help. Um, so one way to identify if you're getting uh, overheated and you're at risk of heat stroke um, you can look for certain things. So you might feel lightheaded or dizziness, extra fatigue when you wouldn't normally. Um, one thing that our body does to help us cool down is our blood vessels dilate. So they get bigger in the, um, closer to the surface of your skin. Mm -hmm. And this helps us to sweat and release heat from the surface of our tissue. So you might feel sweaty or clammy. Um, but one thing that that also does is it lowers your blood pressure. And that's the danger when you have heat stroke, is that your blood pressure is getting below safe levels. And so along with that then, um, your heart might be working a little bit more. And if you're living with a chronic lung condition and feeling triggered by heat or smoke, which we'll get to, um, you know, your lungs might be working more, which means your heart is also working more. Yeah, so these generalized, what might seem like a generalized symptom of unwellness may very well be due to the beginnings of heat stroke. So if you are feeling dizzy, lightheaded, shortness of breath, feeling any heart palpitations, um, you need to cool yourself down. So cooling the whole house down is the first great step and you can do this as a prevention. So um, during the hottest times of the day when the sun is out and the outdoor temperature is at its peak, you want to close your indoor space. So it's best to keep things closed before the heat goes up. That's right. So in the morning when your home is at its coolest, lock that in. 
Close the curtains, reflect the sunlight. The heat comes from the sun shining in. Absolutely. Board it up. Board it up. So you can put cardboard as a very simple solution, thermal blinds or curtains. Blackout drapes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then once you've done that, so you're blocking an external source of heat coming into the home, then you want to work on keeping it cool inside. So you might be looking for the cooler areas of your home to hang out, and you should probably know where that is beforehand. And having a thermometer or a thermostat in your home to kind of help you know what the temperatures are inside will be really helpful. If you don't have that, of course, um, we're going to use external things to help cool our home. Things like air conditioners, heat pumps, fans. Yes. Look for the house. Look for the area in your home that is naturally more cool. So these could be um, rooms with less windows or smaller windows. If you live in a full house, that would be somewhere lower, especially underground. If you do have a basement. Uh, it'll be cooler than anything upstairs. Absolutely. If you're gonna be cooking, don't turn the oven on. That's right. It's Source a great heat. Yes, it's a great time for salads. Yeah. Um, even opening and closing your refrigerator more often is not good. A refrigerator creates coolness, but when you open that door, it has to work harder and it pumps out heat when you do that. So yeah. don't open your fridge very often. <laughs> don't use the blow dryer. Just leave your hair wet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't do the six hour stew. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, as well, we might want to think a little bit about um, our activities too. So along those lines of making changes in our home, maybe we're having more a little bit more rest or kind of low physical activity days as we kind of conserve our energy a little bit. And that's okay during um, heat warnings and extreme heat events. Yeah, so do check your two week weather forecast. If you know uh, a spike in heat is coming, listen to the radio, check your newspapers. They can usually predict when these events are coming. So plan to stay home, do your groceries in advance, get some canned foods, get some things that you don't have to leave the house to um, top up. And don't plan to, you know, go out in the hottest time of day to do any errands, especially in a hot car. Yes. Yeah. So let's say you've done your best. Let's say you've, you've uh, blocked out any external heat. You have things closed. You're in the coolest area of your home. You're cooling your home as best you can. You have emergency kit and maybe you've got um, some foods in there where you don't need to use the oven or anything. And if you are still feeling symptomatic and, and it's not feeling like it's quite an emergency, like where you have to call 911 or go to emergency, but you know you're not feeling great, then we're gonna look to external sources of where we can go to cool down. And usually in your city, they will plan to have cooling centers. So these are places that you can go that usually have air conditioning where you can exp spend extended periods of time. So these would be things like malls, libraries, community centers, churches, or other spiritual centers. Um, I so escaped the heat in Ikea. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Resourcefulness. So yeah, be resourceful and do a little bit of research and kind of know where your nearest cooling center might be. Yeah. And we really don't want to miss like the most important thing that you can do during a high heat crisis. That is, drum roll, drink a lot of water. Water, 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 water. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And if I didn't mention it, Hydrate. Hydrate. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So have lots of water at the ready. Just keep drinking it. Yeah. You probably need more. And you might want to um, top up on some electrolytes as well because you'll be sweating. So Pedialyte is a great uh, answer for that as well. You may sweat more. This is great. If your body can keep sweating, it means you're probably doing okay. If you notice that you're not sweating anymore, uh, that could be a sign of a problem. Yeah. Right. Now, in the nighttime, so in extreme heat weather events, what might be happening is it's hot in the day and it's hot in the night. So the nighttime is not cooling. Um, so we want to do everything we've kind of talked about, but there's some extra things we could do. So we can sleep with wet sheets 
or wet t-shirts. Spritz I, yourself down. Absolutely. Ice cubes. Have that fan blowing on you. And if you're living with a chronic lung condition, just generally feeling short of breath with heat, having a fan blowing right in your face can be really helpful to calm the shortness of breath a little bit. Yeah, and try not to get one that you have to um, exert energy for. Um, they have little electric handheld ones. You can just have it propped up on the table next to you or hold it and just aim it at your face. A spritz on your face and the fan, even the better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so we've talked about heat. That's, yeah. Yeah, but the reality heat. is we might be dealing with heat and forest fire smoke at the same time. The same time. So let's cover the smoke part okay. next. Okay. And then we'll do both. So what are the risks to us living with chronic lung conditions with forest fire smoke? It's the big T. It triggers inflammation and shortness of breath and bronchoconstriction. So your airways might get irritated and they can get all um, tight. tight. Yeah, the muscles will tighten up and or they can get inflamed. So the tissues are actually swelling inside your airways. And both of these lead to problems moving air in and out of your lungs and they can cause shortness of breath. And similarly, we're talking about the lungs, but we know lungs and heart are connected and that same inflammatory process can really trigger inflammation in our cardiovascular system and our blood vessels. So again, we're looking at a double whammy of a trigger. Yeah, and the smoke, it's chemical, right? So these things can cause full body inflammation. So you really don't want to be inhaling the smoke. So this is another reason to be inside. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, our same tips for staying inside. Also, when uh, the air quality is poor. And again, the number one way to protect yourself is to kind of know when the air quality is poor. So in Canada, we have the Air Quality Health Index. AQHI. AQHI. You can find it on weather stations, wherever you go. So weather apps, uh, on, the, on the television, on the radio. Um, and it's a um, zero to 10 scale of air quality. So really poor air quality will be seven to 10 plus on the AQHI scale. And so at each level, it will let you know if you are compromised. So for example, uh, sensitive, like living with a chronic lung condition, it will have recommendations for you in terms of your exposure, being outside and exertion. Yeah. So watch those levels again, prepare for that. Do your groceries before <laughs> the smoke uh, comes, but know that the smoke, um, the air quality is very specific to where you are. Mm -hmm. And this might be your key to avoiding it. Um, so we're in the lower mainland here and the lower mainland has little pockets where it can be worse and little pockets where it might be better. And actually those areas often coincide. So, the less smoke often coincides with also the less heat. Ah. So different cities will have different warnings. So um, cities that are more inland, like um, Port Coquitlam, Port Moody, Port Coquitlam, um, Abbotsford and whatnot. So they've got the mountains and it acts like a barrier and it keeps the heat in and it keeps the smoke in. So you'll find they're usually hotter um, and can have higher levels of smoke compared to Richmond, which is on the water. There's a water breeze. It comes from a different area than uh, the interior, which is generally where our smoke comes from. So Richmond might be cooler because of the ocean breeze and it should be um, cleaner air. So if you have relatives or friends um, in those different cities, you could consider <laughs> just going and spend the day with them, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and that theory also holds true for the time of day. So generally heat and smoke might be, be a little bit less in the morning and then as it gets a little bit warmer throughout the day, you can see those levels kind of increase. So once you know how to identify what your levels are and then a little bit of guidance in terms of what you should do, the next logical step would be we want to protect ourselves. We want to breathe in as not as much smoke and those 
particles that can cause that inflammation um, as much as possible. So what are some things we could do? Yeah, so we do have control, a little bit of control or more control over our indoor air quality. Uh, and so uh, windows should be closed, keep the smoke out. If you've got gaps in your windows, you literally could stuff those gaps, mm. plug up the holes, and then you need to try to purify the air that's inside. Filter the air, yes, yes. absolutely. So these particles are very, very, very small, um, but so a HEPA filter should help you to uh, filter your indoor air so you're breathing in the cleanest air as possible. But there are some stipulations uh, with a HEPA air filter. So for example, we are talking HEPA air filter and not any other kind of air filter. So a HEPA air filter is like the gold standard and just be wary of some of those air filters out there promising great things uh, because some of them um, like ozone air filters for example will actually cause your breathing to be worse. So we're talking HEPA only. You want to make sure that that you know how much area square footage that that filter can filter. So basically, if you have a really small square footage filter and you're in a really big room, it might not actually be filtering the air you're breathing very well. So you kind of want to match that up as best as possible, especially for a portable filter. So something that's kind of tabletop that maybe you move from room to room wherever you are and it's filtering the air that you breathe. Yeah, you could consider um, going if you just have a small um, filtered fan or maybe you've even made your own with a fan um, attaching a HEPA filter to the fan that does work. It passes the air through the filter. You could go in a smaller room and close the door, maybe put a wet towel under the door and just filter the air in the room that you're in, especially where you sleep where you spend a lot of yeah. time. Yeah, absolutely. And so that filter that Tina just mentioned, that's a box filter, and you're using actually a furnace filter with a MERV score, so they, the type of filter and how much it can filter is measured by something called a MERV. And you're looking for a 13 or four, 14 as the filter to attach to a fan and, uh, and be a portable filter. And so we're gonna give you some resources below where you can kind of look that stuff up. Yeah, and then the best way to filter all of the air where you live um, is if you have an air conditioner or a heat pump or a furnace that can just blow the air, not heat it up in the yeah. summer. Uh, so all of those three things should be able to accommodate a filter, but you need to check the quality of that filter and that's where the HEPA filter should be. So check the specs for your device and uh, make sure it is a clean, have a filter going into the smoke season. Yeah. And those of you living in apartment buildings and stuff, you know, advocate for yourself. So reach out to your building manager, find out what kind of filter they're filtering, they're using to filter your building, um, and just be more aware. Yep. Yeah. Be aware, be so, informed. Yeah. Uh, information is power. Absolutely. So one last tip. So, um, we know you might have to go out. Even though you can visually see it's smoky and the air quality might be bad, you might have to go out because as we know, these smoke events can last um, a while. So let's talk about masks a little bit. Yeah. So we can use masks to help filter the air we breathe. We learned this through the pandemic. So we're talking really about N95 masks with a really good seal. Yeah. So around the nose and all the way around yeah, the mouth. Or the KN95 are good. Yeah. yeah. Surgical masks will filter some, but obviously there's gaps in the mask, so you're not going to filter all. Um, and they're not as fine filtering, so yeah, it's better if you have an N95 for the smoke. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. And wear them. You got to wear them, but they don't work. <laughs> and every time you pop it off, you're just letting the bad air in. So if you're going to put it on, put it on before you leave the house. Um, you know, we still want people to stay hydrated, take sips as you need to, but the more you leave it on with the seal, the better, more effective yeah. it's going to be. Absolutely. So we know, you know, despite our best efforts, what's outside can come inside in terms of particulates from forest fire smoke. So if you've done the best you can in your home and you're still feeling triggered and you're following the plan for your, your lungs, your action plan, um, and it's, it's still problematic that you might want to look to those cooling centers again um, for forest fire smoke. So you would go to these cooling centers, you'd be cooled off, but potentially those centers could have some better fil 
filtration and you might find some relief there. Yeah, and when in doubt, if you're not feeling good, your breathing's not good, uh, you're feeling lightheaded, you can call 811, um, call the health line, get some solid advice, um, and seek out your emergency room if you feel that you need to. Absolutely. Yeah. So, this summer, as we prep, we are learning, we are prepping, there are uh, for those that live with chronic lung conditions, there are heat and smoke action plans that you can take uh, to your doctors, to your certified respiratory educators, your respiratory therapists, including Tina and I, and get them filled out and feel confident that you can uh, enjoy the summer and get through an extreme heat and smoke a bit. Yep. So maybe our motto this time is so that you can stay in there and live your, your best, best lung life. life. See you next time.